What we're seeing is the practical life of being an artisan and a worker and a creative industries person. People really want to understand how to manage their business. We're small business, we're entrepreneurs, we're basically inventors. And so people really want to know real basic stuff, how to keep your books, how to license your business, how to consider your work in terms of product and service. Coming off of the pandemic, it really gave us a great foundation for anchoring ourselves and reassessing what our community needs were. We brought arts to the forefront through our Art House at Your House program during that time period and really gained trust from a lot of people who leaned on arts and culture as a coping mechanism during really terrifying times. Our Artworks program is probably our strongest program right now, funding-wise, because it has bolstered up this community of arts um, organizations that we're helping gain the access to um, training that artists and creatives need to be better business people. We brought that to people via Zoom and now we're bringing it in person as well. And what we learned about accessibility during that time period was really important. The disabled community said, this is fantastic that all of this programming is now available to us and accessible, but why didn't you do it sooner? And it really put a light bulb over our heads of this is something we're really committed to doing long term. We just kept, kicked off an operating campaign, which as in our nonprofit will be the first time that we're ever fundraising forward versus in the time period that we're at. So it allows us to do the work that we're doing even better, being able to plan forward in that capacity. So next year we'll be able to bring on an events person and a programming person that will help us achieve those goals better. We've also realized with our building space, which is so fabulous in an area like downtown Overland Park to have a one acre property is such an unbelievable gift. So we have an additional capital campaign that will help us reinvigorate that whole outdoor space so that community can gather and it's safe and it's accessible and it's inclusive for everybody. And so making a living is critical because the economy has been such a big deal. But we never stop with social justice issues. So the, the issues around racial equality, around gender and sexuality and discrimination, issues around lack of resources for people that have challenges, whether it be cognitive, emotional, physical, or developmental. We've learned a lot along the way and working closely with our local government to make spaces like ours successful and planting the seeds for organizations like ours in areas like downtown Overland Park that needed redevelopment and a breath of fresh air breathed into them. This is something that can be repeated again and again and again. We didn't invent this. All we are is we're living it and we're showing that we've been really responsible in the work that we've done, that we have never thought that we do it alone. We do it through a network of partnerships across communities and we also share our resources with those communities. Now we have opportunities to reach out into rural Kansas, into communities that may not be able to uh, literally stand in our doors. What has happened since the re renewal, the, the revisioning of downtown, is that we have attracted a lot of businesses, but they're not always your traditional. They are creative businesses. There are artists, there are art galleries, um, there are music stores. There are all types of businesses that support that creative economy and they're kind of blending in a fabric down in downtown Overland Park that makes it really an exciting place to come and work.